Just how far can you make the cue ball backspin? It really doesn't matter if it's a long way or not at all. I'm going to show you all the simple yet effective tricks that allow you to spin the cue ball back even further. But backspin is generated by striking the cue ball below centre in exactly the same way that topspin helps the cue ball run through. And it's easier to explain why the cue ball runs through, so we're going to begin with that. The higher you strike the cue ball, the more topspin is produced. And the faster you play the shot, the further it goes. And the further you push your cue through the ball, the more topspin you're going to generate. And backspin works in exactly the same way, which can be a little bit confusing. Because the more you push your cue through in that direction, the more it comes back in this direction. Roughly half of how well you're able to play a screw shot will be determined by how far you're pushing your cue through the ball. And if you find you're not able to get any backspin at all on the cue ball, you're probably stopping instantly on impact. This common mistake is caused by the worry that the cue ball is going to come back so fast that you simply won't be able to get your cue out of the way in time. So when you practice backspin, always use off straight shots because in this way I can now push my cue all the way through the ball without ever risking it being in the way. But backspin also requires you to hit close to the edge. And it may sound silly, but you're not going to be able to do that with a broom handle. Oh, nearly. Equipment is a big factor here and it's not really the type of tips you're using, it's the condition of them. If it's not a smooth dome shape covered in a thin layer of chalk, then you'll struggle to play any of the shots coming up here. Speed is also a factor as the spin gradually comes off the cue ball as it begins to slow down. But when it makes contact with the object ball... It doesn't matter how fast it's moving, with a full contact it will stop completely dead. From this position it will then only move in the direction it's spinning. Here the cue ball stops completely before the top spin carries it on forwards. So the amount the cue ball will backspin depends entirely on how fast it's rotating and not at all on its speed, which just keeps it spinning for longer. Once it's made it to the object ball, the amount you're able to screw back depends entirely on your technique. But of course your technique is also going to be incredibly vital. The skill to it is to be able to hit as low as possible without getting a miscue and it's your technique that can make a huge difference in this area. The main reasons that backspin is lost are striking down at the cue ball from too high of an angle, or possibly even dipping down at the cue ball, and scooping up, all of which can cause a reduction of spin or even miscues. But you can solve these problems and create a lot more spin by simply improving three separate elements of your cue action. And the first of these is actually how much you rotate your cue as you play the shot. Rotating your wrist could cause you to cue across the ball and that might even result in you missing the pot. But it could also cause you to cue at an inconsistent height like we saw earlier. Put simply, you may strike higher on the cue ball than you expect to and get no spin or lower than you expect to and end up with a miscue. The cue rotating on its own is unlikely to have any effect but it will cause unnecessary wrist movement and that can start to cause you problems. Of course you don't have to be getting this as dramatically wrong to miss difficult pots or to end up putting slightly less backspin on the cue ball than you'd like. So the more you can stop your cue rotating as you push it through the ball, the more backspin you're going to produce. So how can you tell if you've rotated your cue? Well you can use the grain in the wood. You can see at the beginning of the shot here that my cue's very clearly in a different position to where it ends up. And the only way I've ever been able to keep the grain in line is to control the position that my hand finishes in after it's played the shot. But you don't want to be thinking about this on the shot. You need to be concentrating on what you're playing. The way to get it right is practice. Because I've practiced it, I know if my cue hand finishes there, not there or there, but there, then my cue won't rotate at all and I'll get more backspin on the cue ball. The way to do it is to play the shot 
and then work out where your cue hand is. Again, this takes practice to find the exact position your cue hand should finish in and attempt to get it there on each shot you play. But be careful because this is something that's very easy to get wrong and it can end up ruining your entire game. If it causes you to miss shots, then it isn't working and it's something you definitely shouldn't be messing around with. Before we look at anything else, let's just find Albo from Johor, Malaysia, which is in there. Now though, we've got to look at the height problem more directly. You can test if your cue is rising up off the shot or dipping by simply using a cushion. If you cue up next to it, you can see how level, in comparison to the cushion, you're able to keep your cue as you move it backwards and forwards. You can see with this super slow-mo that my cue wobbles a bit as it strikes the ball, but roughly goes through on the same plane. The more you can keep your cue on this line and stop it from wobbling, the more backspin you're going to produce. And you may have noticed with some of the shots that I've played during this video, my cue jumping up at the end, or possibly even dipping a little bit. Even though for most of the time I was in contact, my cue would have been in the right position, this would still have reduced backspin. Although with this one I was trying to point across the table at the same time, I would have produced even more spin on these shots if I'd managed to keep my cue on the same plane for longer. So what do you need to do with your technique to avoid dipping or lifting your cue as much as possible? To keep your cue as level as possible, you need to stretch out your fingers on the backswing, but still keeping them in contact with the cue, otherwise you'll lose control, and then tighten them up again on the way through, and this will help your cue to stay a lot more level. How straight you're able to push the cue through the ball can also make a small difference. And again, it's fairly straightforward to test. This time, by queuing up straight along the bulk line, and seeing if you can keep your cue perfectly in line as you deliver it. If you can't, it's possible you're rotating your wrist a little bit too much as we observed before, but other possibilities include pulling your cue too tightly into your body, causing your cue to come round your body at an angle. Another possibility is you're releasing the cue completely on your backspin, which can cause you to lose control a little bit. And then of course there's the age old throwing your shoulder at the ball, but these tend to be the symptoms of problems rather than the cause, and the cause usually involves you not quite being in the right place for one reason or another. Two things could be going wrong here, and the first of those might be that you're not quite standing in the right place. A general rule that's very easy to try is if you're missing shots to the left generally, just stand a little bit further to the right, and if you're missing shots to the right, just stand a tiny bit further to the left. If you get this right, you should find you just push your cue through and the ball goes directly towards the pocket. But alternatively, you could just be cueing across the ball, in which case, just try playing the cue ball through the spots a few times to see if you're applying any unwanted spin. If you can improve your cueing to allow yourself to play the cue ball straight back up and down through the spots, not only will this improve your potting, but as we'll see in a minute, may improve your spin. Before we look more at how to improve this, let's just find Arzalan from Kabul, Afghanistan. Although they're not that effective on their own, these three elements together can make a big difference to your cueing. I realised this when testing this really weird phone app a few years ago. You tape it to the end of your cue, I'm actually using a bike mount here because it's easier, but this thing tells you everything we were looking at, how much you rotate your cue, how level you keep it, and how straight you're able to play the shots. And although I don't think it made me pot any better, I noticed the more I got these things right, the more spin I was able to generate on the cue ball. I noticed the more you got these things right, the softer the cue ball felt, and the less it felt like you were actually striking it. In the end, it feels more like you're pushing the cue through a liquid. And this simply helps you screw the cue ball back further. And it's not only about how much you can make the cue ball backspin. Personally, I think this is far more crucial. The extra backspin gives you the ability to hold the cue ball straighter, making it easier to get in position and play the game. To do this, you need to generate maximum spin with the least amount of power. And here's how you practice that. 
Again, set up some off straight shots so you don't have to worry about your cue getting in the way, but try and pod the ball and screw the cue ball back to the cushion with the least amount of power possible. It may not always go smoothly, but eventually you're going to be able to get more backspin on the cue ball with less power. This will help you a lot with shots like this, where you need to put backspin on the cue ball, but you really don't want to strike it very hard. But what if you do add more power? Watch the cue ball here, because when you play a shot at an angle, power can delay the backspin. So I can actually swerve the cue ball around the pink. And this allows me to play exhibition shots like this. I can screw the cue ball in between the pink and blue and come around two cushions out for the yellow. And I think playing shots like this with power is the most challenging thing. I can probably get a similar amount of spin on the cue ball as Judd Trump, but I simply can't hit it as hard as at the same time. As you can see here, my cue ball didn't quite break as wide, so I couldn't play the shot as well. But it's the slow, draggy shot that's going to help you get higher breaks. And in my recent head cam video, it was one of the three main shots I was playing. So if you want to see the break or me recreating the Judd Trump shot I just played, then have a look at these two videos. And remember, don't just watch play and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.